welcome to Tea Time London, the original home of tabloid scandal, where the tea is always savagely drinkable. I'm your host, Kachenga. Lovely to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> happening I'm Elena and I'm a cloakroom attendant in South London's Princess Margaret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 Standards. Go on. Hi guys, my name's Charlie and I'm a trans activist and author. Hi, I'm Chloe, poet, artist, black feminist. Rather. So yeah, hi, good to see you again. And yeah, we felt that a good thing to discuss today would be trade. <laughs> <laughs> Going really deep in and yeah, just to keep things current, um, because yeah, oh. this weekend <coughs> The meme to end all memes ended. We should like, yeah, should we go close up? We're gonna, we can add it in later. Either way, basically, this meme came out on yes. Cardi B's page, and I felt so bad because I, I started cracking up. Iconically. I was literally, it was actually rather. Okay, 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 the thing about, the difference about this situation is Cardi B knows the girls. Mm. Cardi B knows girls like Sean and Brooks, mm. so on and so on. Yeah. So mm. Cardi B knows what this means, mm. but the situation at hand is Cardi B ain't the bitch to be making sure that this situation, what this means, is just put out as a joke and not as a like serious thing in which people are looking at and be like, okay, that's why we don't deal with these type of girls. You know? I mean, she said that's that, that was is, hacked, so. I just want to <laughs> Bullshit, bullshit. We know you know the girls. She's been out in girls since day. She was a stripper in New York. She's been all around girls. She knows so many T girls, trans women. So she, she, it's almost like she's one of those cis girls who kick it with the girls, haha, -ha, you can have a good time, drink, mm. you know, get some fellas and so on. But, you know, now she's a big celeb, she's not trying to give a damn, even though her platform could change a lot. And then she's like, also, you know, she lets her boyfriend say some like wild stuff. Let's her I'll boyfriend say stuff? I mean, she's not in control of her man. No, but you're in control of your man. 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 You're no ally no. if you're going to be going out with yeah. men. Yeah. I don't think, that's think the man is absolutely hilarious. No, but that's the point. No, but she has a man that I'm exposed from you. Literally. No, 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 no. Elena, yeah, I'm not disagreeing. That's no, what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a personal. She's she knows the yeah. joke. I'm, I'm gonna put the disclaimer out. She didn't post it. Did you hear the tea? She didn't post it. Yeah. Unless she, she, no, no, she, no, no, she, but she did post it on her Facebook. I think no, she didn't. No, no, she wasn't. She said she hasn't been running her Facebook thing. And but either way, then that's your people. You need to correct your people. And she did, to be fair. And she. And the thing is, Elena, it's not that it's not. We know the joke. She knows the joke. But the problem is, she's not a person who's even trying to allow change for that joke to not be a joke. You know, like, because oh, it's a serious, because the thing is that, isn't it? It's a serious joke. Oh, babe. listen, I pissed myself laughing when I we said I put this up mm. straight on my Instagram story. Because we know story, what it is. But which like, every well. man that I've slept with is shaking the house down. <laughs> it's, it's true. true. It's true. And it, I, uh, the thing is, to back you up, I did see Angelica Ross talking about the danger of um, this is what yeah, it is. of Cardi B putting that out without any sort of realistic <laughs> context sorry. ever. There's I'm a sorry. Man, I know, it's hilarious <laughs> me. It's, it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Woo. But um yeah, I just feel that I don't know, like when I'm scrolling through feeds these days, I'm just so used to there being so much trauma and dire stuff whatever and like when i saw that meme what i liked about it was that it, for a moment i got a, a chance to laugh at the download trade do you know what i mean <laughs> that, 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 and i think yeah, again yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, i wanted yeah, to talk about it because yeah. um i remember when, yeah let's talk about the first time that we heard that phrase down low because i think I, I didn't really understand it when um the Aaliyah song came out mm. yeah i think i was too young to understand what that meant and then in the like early thousand late nineties, early thousands, there was um that um that trend of like all these different talk shows talking about the case of the down low. And it was just really for like gay dudes really. Like that was who I really associated down low with. Like yeah, for 
I don't really use the term download for the men that are linking us, to be it's honest. It's discreet. Yeah, oh, that's it. It's discreet. discreet. That's discreet. the one they love. So I'm, 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 always, I'm yeah. always discreet. discreet. Yeah, discreet. discreet. It's no Sandra, one's business. Yeah, no, it's no one's business that. who I'm linking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. They've always said yeah. they use that terminology. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, you know what? I like you girls because you, you look fish, you look mm, feminine. Yeah. Like, you I always get the ones where they go, yeah, you're very convincing. Zen, or if I was to walk with you on road and that, nobody would clock, nobody would know the situation. Yeah. But, you know, you get that a lot, you know, I like a girl who's very discreet. But the, but the, thing, the, but the thing is, the thing is about a lot of the guys that do discreet girls, they will say all these pretty things to you, but you know they're also shagging Tom, Dick, and Harry that works yeah. in a bag that just oh, likes to dress up in lingerie late night. Are we really coming for the cross dressers again? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Literally, like, why do we need to yeah, come for yeah. them all the time? It's not, no, it's not coming from them. It is, it is, dude. No, no, because discreet guys, the problem with them is a lot of the time they try to act like we're the only type of girls they want to play with. Mm. But really, they like to play with a lot more. Reason why they need to keep us discreet so they keep all of us in one box. Yeah, there's levels to it. Like, I don't know, per personally, me, I don't sleep with training chasers, personally. <laughs> Right. Okay. Please define what trying to chase no, is. Listen, you won't catch me actively going to like a trans club and pulling men from there. Like most of the geezers I think has been like on road or you know I've yeah. them on apps and that online. And majority mm. of them, listen, the real tea is majority of the geezers that I've linked in that have mm. just been like proper like straight geezers. Oh my god. Never been with a girl like you before. Mm. You're, you're amazing. Mm. All the things in that life. You need to talk That's about South London. Because oh, yeah, we've got an international type. audience oh, here. Yeah, so well, let's explain what it means to let. Yeah, what on what on road means. Right, on road. Yeah. So, like, when you're and what it, on road in South London. Right. Um, what kind of, yeah, what kind of. Right. So I'm from, I'm from Dirty Deptford. <laughs> 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 yeah, they get to the South East London, Lucian's Princess Margaret. That's it. And um, basically, when you're out on road, it means like basically you walk in the streets and that. Not like curb crawling. <laughs> 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 not like curb crawling. But like, yeah, when you're walking out on road, like you're busting out on road, going shop or whatever. And it's like, you mm. know, the geezers all approach you. Geezers meaning like the bloke, the men. Mm. And they approach you. Like, I had this lovely bit of Spanish trade a couple of weeks ago, right? I was near Deptford Bridge, right? And he approached me on road. Like, you know them things when you walk in and that, and you both look at each other and look over your shoulder, mm. look over your shoulder. So I said, right, I said to him, I was like, babe, are you going to come and have a conversation mm. again, right? So he approached me, we started chit chatting. Mm. It was all nice and that, whatever. And then we ended up linking and mm. that. And it was literally all case of, oh my God, baby, I've never done this kind of thing before, baby. Mm. I'm like, yes. He was really into it for his first time ever. Mm. So, yeah. It's one of them ones. D D he was DL but not DL at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Mm, first time. First time, mate. Yeah, yeah, first yeah, time for everything. Yeah, yeah standard. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Because to explain to international audience, yeah. So Elena's from South London. Right now we're recording in the heart of North London. Yeah, we're proper, in Tottenham. Proper. And um, yeah, that's a big deal. Mm. Anyway, so basically, <laughs> where it's um, yeah, I've not felt safe to really start talking to men on road in that way until like the past like 18 months, mm. I guess. Like I had to get to a certain point where I transition where I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, and then I don't, yeah, I won't necessarily disclose whilst they're talking to me on road, but I will mm. let them know later. And yeah, most of the time it's, yeah, it's cool. Like I haven't had, but I've, I feel very fortunate that, you know, the men that I've been speaking to have been yeah, more mm. informed than most, and they know what's up and mm. whatever. So it's felt a bit safer, but at the same time, I'm always just a little bit on edge. Mm. And then also, the other thing I wanted to say about trade in general is that before, I really put so much stock in the masculinity of the men that were oh, moving yeah, to me because of their straightness, definitely. because of their, you know, and what they were serving and stuff. And because I've enjoyed such um so much more freedom and access and stuff over the past year i've begun to value it so much less mm. so like where before i was um i would always say to them you know you need to take me out you need to treat me in a certain way or whatever that is obviously i still have my standards and i'm still you know i've got my boundaries and you know the, the way that i value myself and stuff but i have to be honest and say that Whereas I used to just dismiss discreet guys or whatever, mm. or, you know, 
like now I actually will entertain them because most of the men that I'm linking aren't really on my level mm. in that way so I'm like yeah that's nice, cool like we can bang like that's fine mm. and like I don't because I don't need you mm. I've got a career I've got my own life you're not coming into that do you know what I mean so I don't really need you to take me to Nando's and you know walk down the road with me and prove that you know you see me as a, no, I don't really need that as much as I used to because mm. I've got that yeah, I just don't really need them as much as I feel like I, yeah, I don't need their validation. Yeah, it happens the further you along, you go with your transition mm. and that, like, okay, your confidence builds and that, do you know what mm. I mean? You know, they serve a purpose at a time, mm. and it's all about the era that you're in at that mm. time, do you know what I mean? Because there's some mm. of the geezers that I've linked, mm. and that, you know, and they served a purpose at the time, but for where I'm at now, when they mm. doing different things, and yeah. that's like, you know, we've all been there, we've all mm. been there, don't get me wrong, yeah. but... So we've yeah. covered North, covered South, you're over in West, was <laughs> hey, tell us about one. Wes. Because, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, I don't even know it. Like, so Wes, I'm from the richest borough in, I think it's in Europe or something, mm. but I'm from the poorest part of that borough. So, if you've heard like Grenfell and stuff, that's like where I'm from pretty much. And so, I'm in a really weird mix of like being between like the richest of the rich mm. and like, like, yeah, Kensington yeah. is really awkward like that. It's a know, hard it's really, yeah. yeah. Like, so I had it quite hard. So, I'm a council state girl. So, I'm looking, I'm looking at the wrong place. So, I'm a council state girl. So, council states are kind of like the version, the English version of like projects. Kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, transitioning for me was quite like hard because I, I was getting like glass bottles thrown at me, bricks mm. thrown at me when I was leaving my house and stuff. Mm. And that kind of, transcended into like my dating life mm. so like i didn't date until or even get with guys until like very like far on into my transition because i just mm. didn't feel safe like navigating the dating world mm. as a trans girl so like i yeah i just yeah it was a weird one growing up in west mm. and like living in west like i just mm. it took me a long time and mm. now that I'm, i've done it i'm like i should just i just wish i'd started sooner because i feel like girls this is girls period trans mm. or not we I don't know how to say, we put so much into ourselves mm. and men do the bare minimum. Oh my god. Like, oh I felt like my. I had to have finished my laser, oh. have boobies, yeah. have hips, have like mm -hmm. long hair before I get with a guy. Mm -hmm. Guys barely brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. barely. So like, sorry, like if I'm thinking that I have to look like mm. Carmen Carrera to have mm -hmm. sex and yet you're turning up to my house with your teeth brushed and that's about mm -hmm. here. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just wish that I'd started soon, honestly, like, because I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of me regulars, you know, I don't even bother putting makeup on. Like, oh yeah, girl. I don't give a shit. I'm like, either way, you're still sticking it in me. Oh, okay. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's like, any holes at all? Oh, nice, thank <laughs> you. Oh, make sure you look nice for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make that sure you wear nice clothes. That kills it. Make sure you, you wear a nice clothes. Who are you going to wear for me? Who are you going to wear for me? I'm not like, what are you going to wear for me? They turn up and they're like Primark boxes. And I'm like, is that what you're wearing for me? You know? Like, it's a joke. Mm-hmm. Any better over in East London? Oh, we got some from everywhere. We got some the wicked witch of the west. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The wicked witch of the west. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm the bitches of South East. Oh, no, say what you said earlier, Jenny. What's that? Oh, well, I'm Jenny from the block with the cop. <laughs> Absolutely. She's the British GS Madison for real. If Sometimes. you're not following her Instagram, get on it. Her stories <laughs> are uh, discreet, discreet packaging 94. Yeah, so oh, we lot. should put our little handles up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where we live. We really live on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Stunted. Insta Queen. I know. But tell us about East Clay. <laughs> East is boring. That's um, not true. No, you're not dating no, 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 and the business guys, a, no, no. and the round the way that's the guys. Thing. The only type, the only, East is the most eclectic. Yeah, no, no, but, no, no, but the most of the time that I actually get with people from East is like from Canary Wharf. So yeah. I live by like the riverside. Mm. Um, so yeah, I normally get guys that are bankers and stuff or mm. finance traders. Mm. But generally, as a like a regular regular guy, I'm going south. Majority of the time, guys <laughs> from South would try to me. It's true, it's true, though, isn't it? It's true. Yeah, guys from South are so dependable, oh, literally. No. You know what they're about. Oh, yeah. They know what you're about, and they know. Oh, yeah, yeah no, yeah. listen, you know, and they feel like. It's funny because it's like, not the safest of all the areas no, to, like, you know, be operating in, but they do know the most. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they are the ones who, yeah, they've been with several, they're all cool. 
Yeah, you're beautiful, you know. Yeah, yeah no, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what like, I've had bit of boys from school, mate. They're like, listen, I'll remember you and I'd still fuck you now. Nah. <laughs> <I'm like>, yes, <laughs> boys, let's go. Oh, that's hilarious. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, maybe one or two hits of boys, but that's like a makeout session, but mm. normally they're too skinny and it's boring. Mm. Um, yeah, and then, like, especially the more curvy I've got, so, like, walking on the road with my bodacious bum. Or tiny bum, cute bum, peachy bum. Um, yeah, you got a high peach. A high, me high peach. Yeah, you're not taking, you're not taking my bow. <laughs> no, 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 which has been interesting online as well as on road. Mm-hmm. Um, I sometimes get uncles that I've noticed like walk past me and then like chase me down the street. Mm. <laughs> um, and yeah, I find that really, I really do enjoy that more because you're really just getting with someone who's more on your level in the mm. context of like ethnicity. And You've stuff. got the shorthand. Yeah, you can speak but then like more breezily. I'll get one of like I the other day for example I had this white guy on the bus and he kept like trying to turn around and look at me and it wasn't until like I was about to get off the bus and I was on the top, we were top, on the top deck and I was on the stairs and he just like stared at me and smiled and I was like, why are you not trying to do that? Like, come move to me but like Oh, I'll tell him straight, when they do, you know they're looking over the shoulder to him Hey, you're gonna make a conversation then darling, come on, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk, tell me what's mm-hmm. up Sometimes you, you know, you've got to Grab life by the Do you know what? That, that's the thing. I feel, like, like, I feel like a lot of English guys, especially English white guys, don't approach. They're not good with approaching, but like black men, they, they'll approach you. They'll be like, that's true. You know, they'll give you their energy. Yeah. You know? They're not, they're not. And scared. that's not a trans thing. That's just a racial thing. Like, yeah. Like, racial, just not, like, oh, yeah. No. And I know it sounds terrible to say, but I feel like there's an internal thing. No, it's true. Because I've had like, you know, when you're <laughs> having pillow talk, I also notice that sometimes <laughs> it's this, is that, yeah, with the white guys, they're looking at you and like, oh, like, you know, She's used to like, you know, like big black, you know, whatever, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally, it's true, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Whatever, because no, I would like to with my body, innit? I'm mm. only going to get a certain kind of guy. Cause I always like, you know, that big dick energy thing. I'm like, why do I always, like, I never have a problem, no matter what if this is. Do you know what I mean? I'm always like, why am I always blessed? But I think like they look at my body and they think, could I satisfy her? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I literally <laughs> well, do. Like, I they go for it. Like, yeah, no, I think no, I could. You know, Maybe really if they don't, you know, saying yeah. he's God loves a try. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, Actually, man. yeah. Talk about that. I did have when I was dating this white guy in the East, and we were like walking around like mm. Shoreditch and stuff. Mm. When, when we'd be like walking past other black men, mm. I'd notice them really look at me in that way to get my attention. Mm. So it must be like, you want to have this back, don't you? Mm. And I'm like, I'm good actually. Do you get men on that saying, like, do you like white guys? Yeah, that's I find that a weird. lot more often. Because I, I don't yeah. know how am I supposed to answer that properly. Like, yeah, I, I live like, in London. Oh my god, like Caucasian men, my god. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who is on these apps being like, oh I, yeah? The one time, though, I did have a Russian dude actually oh. ask me, do I like his white penis? Yeah, of course. And I was like, that's what I meant. I was like, I was like, <laughs> white guys are alright. And he was yeah. like, I want you to love it. And then he blocked me because I didn't say I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. it. That's what I'm talking about. about. Yeah. But yeah, because I would, I can't get hyped over someone's ethnicity like that. I'm so indifferent. But they so, are. That's their. That's but their yeah, thing. they really they want you to love up on their mm, whiteness, yeah. and like you want this white dick, and you want a big black ass. Because they they see dick. you in these categories. They like yeah, stands up. Yeah, exactly. So they think so they expect the that thing. there's a reciprocity, there, but we're not. There really isn't. Do you know what I um screenshot the other day was this um post by Alaya Fox. Do you know what? She's a joker. She's the most ferociously. Um, she's like. She's militant, but in like a really cool, sophisticated, snappy way. And so she gets blocked on different um, Facebook accounts and just comes out on another one. So like, I knew her like um, on as oh, Anastasia yeah, Fox, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, right now she's under a liar Fox and stuff. Cause yeah, she'll like drag certain groups and then be blocked for like 30 days, whatever. But yeah, straight this the other day she said, I still think back to every time I agreed to let a man fuck me and I spent hours cleaning, cleansing myself. Hours of anxiety about the meeting. Hours tidying up my place. 
hours on my hair and makeup, mm. hours trying to find the perfect outfit. And he spends 10 minutes running out of bed in his basketball shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what did I just say? What did I just Doing say? nothing while I labour to give him the best yeah, head he ever had off. and ride his life away. Definitely. For him to come and get up and leave and forget I existed. Yeah, he's and I'm lying there, unpleasured and wondering if I was good enough for him. Yeah, Me. terrible. I was the one wondering if I was good enough for him who did absolutely nothing and was completely undeserving of the labour I put in to help him come. And I, I sat there feeling worthless, raw from being fucked, and hoping mm. they'd text and validate my worth while they had already forgotten I existed. Yeah. LOL. And you'll wonder why we charge up. I love <laughs> it. <laughs> no, honestly, because the labour of yes. femininity in general, again, not this is not trans specific. Do you know what I mean? Just no, the it's case. Not cool. Yeah, Man, standards. It's not you know what I mean? Cool. The levels of expectations that are placed against us. Do you know what I mean? What you're wearing, what you're doing. You got to be, you know, hairless. You got to be this, that, and the oh, other. And listen. then they come within like three and a half oh, minutes, listen. and like the imbalance is you've literally spent hours getting ready. Yeah, mate. Hours. And they brush their teeth. That's the all they've done. Head. They yeah, just brush the their teeth. teeth. They come and then literally, I just find it so weird when they've come and then they're just putting their clothes on. And they're like, oh, yeah. wow, yeah. wow. Do you know what I mean? And you're over here with all your multiple orgasm capabilities and weight and whatever. They couldn't give a flying fuck. Yeah, no, they, they really, always. They really want do you know what? The things I love how they always like the way they look at our bodies, they always mm. just expect one of them, but I'm always like, no, I get no, like internal ones, nice. like yeah, one time I had nine, that and they're always like, wow, yeah, the boy that's amazing, the maybe the I could do that, you don't even try. The porn has just really gotten <laughs> fucked up, because they want the whole lot, like yeah. the whole fucking yeah. shebang, the lock yeah, stock, they the whole be, fucking yeah, lot. Spurt like, like, yeah, yeah, like listen, they want to be spanked on, they want to be fucked in the arse for a bit, but they also, yeah, they also want you to have a big pair of knockers as well, and it's like, darling, listen, roll me the cash in. That's the tea, do you know what I mean? What's the fun saying? Literally. Listen, I'm doing my thing. Like, listen, what makes me laugh is that you get some of these geezers in that, right? And they want you to be able to do this, do mm. that, do this, do that. Yeah, and it's mm. like, what am I just some sex doll for you to just mm. fuck? Mm. Yeah, I've got a life outside of this, yeah? And at the end of the day, I've got things to be doing. Mm. You know? I've got my therapy to be doing. Mm. Um, I've got work and all of that. So, no, I'm not going to be able to do all of these things. I ain't even got time for myself in the fucking mm. day, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, we're speaking about certain calibre. I always think, yeah, if I were to write a short story about a utopian future, there would be some sort of straight male trans amorous funds, do you know what I mean? Where for the girls mm. that want it, that, you know, you can apply and, you know, you have to, like, do your, like, internship at some sort of strip club and they pay for everything and then at the end of it, you're done. <laughs> I mean, that's just, like, my sexual fantasy. And, anyway, like, um, we should start talking about the calibre of men that we're linking and also um, the sorts of celebrities we were attracted to. Because, yeah, actually... We're dating as well. I was like, are we oh celebrities? God, I know, isn't it? No, I was... Because I was talking with Ashley about just... Celebrities, because we were talking about are there any um, UK male celebrities who are known of linking the trans girls? And I don't, I haven't seen anyone in oh, the tabloids. Maybe a few chits, yeah, yeah, a bit of oh. chit chat between the girls. Yeah. I wouldn't expose anyone, you know, that yeah. football or whatever. But like, <laughs> literally, it will remain unnamed. But do you know who <clears> it is? No one's told me who it is. No, no one's oh. told me who the footballer is. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I know. I don't know, because I'm getting on. So oh, yeah, no, my time's yeah, gone. Like, yeah, my wacky time. I would love, I would love to be the first trans wave, but oh, could you? Yeah. Be, I, I no, now I would want to be like the manager's wife or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, Santa. Yeah, what's that? Who's that um, Swedish one? Who's Sven the Sven, Exactly. Oh, I want to yeah. be the next Nancy. Oh, oh, <laughs> That's me. Do you know what I mean? Mansion in Amsterdam. Oh, lovely. Yeah, not by Kenwood. Anyway, so, <laughs> like, yeah. What celebrities are we attracted to? And who would you see as a... I remember, like, last time... Like UK celebrities. No, well, yeah, you know, keeping <laughs> it, yeah, patriotic <laughs> or whatever. Here's what, okay, so Miley is... And I feel so broke, because, like, yeah, they're all the same kind of guy. But, yeah. First, Danny Dyer. Gorgeous. I know. Could what you a just, man. Wow. What a man. Wow, that's a bit much. Anyway, uh, anyway, I know he's got a wife and kids as well, but like, what is? But anyway, the point is, I love him. I've loved him ever since Human Traffic when he's wanking into the mirror. Oh my God, that was, yeah. Anyway, so he's like number one. Second is Colin Farrell, <coughs> particularly oh, since he got sober and, you know, No, but he, he was one who... 
No, he got caught. No, there's a sex tape of him looking at the black girl. Well, he's like, oh, the yeah, like, was... oh, like, I want this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, yeah, yeah, mate. That was the one. Yeah, that, mate. that was the one that got me. I was like, yeah, if that's, yeah, if that's his vibe, that's cool. Anyways, but yeah, no, I don't think he was exposed for anything. I wouldn't know. Would link to a... to no, a... I meant... no. I no. Swear. Really? No. Okay, You're so thinking right, about right. the others like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so is that and then my third one is the actor Mark Strong. Who um yeah, you might not know him. He's, oh my god, he's just so dashing. Oh, he's just yeah, he's just like a really just a hot bit totty. As it goes, yeah. I know you've got certain ones on your mind. I do. I do. Scandals. No, but oh, like oh, men that you so definitely. Because like, I remember I when I interviewed know. you for days and we spoke about Harry Styles. Oh no, yeah. well, like Harry Styles, I said Harry Styles just because I think he's achievable. Like, I think he <laughs> would get with a trans girl, so I was like, I'll mm -hmm. say him because maybe he reads mm -hmm. days and maybe he wants mm -hmm. to take my pussy. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't really. Like, you're cute, Harry. Like, yeah. you want to hit it, but, yeah. like, I don't think he'd be like, that much. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know who might. Someone else go first, I have a thing. Richard Blackwood. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, my oh, yeah, God. Yeah, that would be the Vince Sanders. <laughs> yes, honey. Yeah, I think man. another nice obvious man. one, Idris Elda. Elda. Oh, okay. okay. You are literally going to have like so many cis girls chasing you. <laughs> 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 Fucking trailer. <laughs> that is the reaction you're going to get. <laughs> and you're probably going to get a tranny bash in. Literally. Yeah. Any mixed race or light skinned um, footballer. <laughs> really? Are you just gonna come out here with your colorism? Is that, is that, is that what we're doing? Oh. That is so awkward. Oh my. I know, like, I chose all white guys, but still, like, that's. Like, no, I named the two black dark skinned guys. I'm saying, like, these boys are kind of exchangeable. But why? <laughs> But well, why would you be more attracted to a light skinned footballer? No, it's not more. It's, I'm just saying, those ones are more exchangeable, but they're just like. They're just there and they're fun. Hmm. Okay. I could imagine like those ones, especially I'm not gonna lie, a lot of like either semi pro or amateur ones slide into my Tinder, so Mm hmm Okay. Same. Party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, wait, didn't you say in your last in the last episode that no one ever slides in your DMs and now you're telling us that all these Tinder, not oh, DMs. Oh, oh, so. okay. Okay. My yeah. I don't know what's wrong with that Instagram. We all need to definitely link the Instagram to him yeah. because Chloe needs um, good DMs. I'm so good because my Tinder be happy. Oh, <laughs> I just came off this I'm well. still at 500, no, 50, I wish 500, 50 men on my WhatsApp. I need to delete some, I need some fresh meat, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who my three are. You go first. Let me what think. What celebrity? What yeah. do you have to be English? Yeah. I didn't even know. No, 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 Wait, no, no that's not fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not, I'm She's really very passionate about yeah, this. Yeah, you are like chill out because. Like, no! <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> well, no, because if it's American, I'm I think that good. has a, a richer cultural outlook than we do. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, just going to throw that down. So as it goes, yeah, you look, you. I don't know, yeah, you. I'm um, see, you know about. People. <laughs> people, people ask me, I go, what's your type? And I go, to be honest, I just like men. Mm -hmm. I do, and I don't really pay attention too much. I like men. Um, the newest skis I've discovered on Instagram is the real Tarzan, and now uh, what a man might call Who's that? He's, listen, he's this exotic animal specialist, yeah, this big black of course you right. Right. He's oh. like, like, what's it, um, Miami, yeah. it's South Beach or something. So I'm like, South Beach and South East, we can run. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's my one at the moment. He's a lick. I love his pictures every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just like really attractive men, to be honest. And so I don't really don't. I can't think of any celebrities off the top of my head, truth be told. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I just like really attractive geese. I love Arab geezers. Um Geezers, I like geezers, I like Latinos, mm. yes, darling. I've done my days of Latinos, you know. Mm. Um, and my everyone, truth be told. Do you think things are getting better, as in, like, with, with men and Chopra specifically, <clears throat> in yeah. terms of being them owning their attraction for us? Because, yeah, shout outs to the Trans Amorous mm. Network. Oh, I love that, and, love that. You know, like, like this? The Trans Amorous Network. Oh, I fall asleep every night. Podcast. Right? Don't no. listen to it. It's, it's so good. It's oh God, so I'm good. It's out. on. Um, it's in the Northwest. It's the Pacific Northwest. Really great team. 
like and it's just like they are you can tell that they've got like a really strong knowledge of social justice movements and stuff and yeah there is such a great range of men who are owning their trans attraction mm. and stuff which is obviously really rare but um in terms of like model of like masculinity that i found um really attractive it was um yeah janet mott's partner aaron mm. um okay. because yeah he was just so um he's just so down for her you know yeah. and like i remember when read her books yeah, I mean, like, who hasn't read Janet Mockney? That's, I mean, that's really? really? I, I tell so many people to Yeah, read that's yeah. what I stand for. She's probably the book that I bought people the most. Yeah, yeah. No, when people come up to my cloakroom and obviously mm. they clock and they ask mm. questions and that, yeah, obviously I'm like, listen, I'll explain to you bits and bobs, but you know, mm. you've got to do your research yourself. Mm. Google. So I always, yeah, standard, obviously Google, but you know, I always get a piece of paper and that, get a pen, and then I say to him, listen, just read this book, mm -hmm. redefining realness. And I think it is, yeah, it's an amazing book. Book. I mm -hmm. love it to bits, man. Definitely. But um, the geezers, I've noticed, I think this comes more into uh, passing politics and that when mm. it comes to the geezers being able to own this shit and that really and be okay with it. I don't the know. Treatment, no, because babes, this is the thing though, the geezers, the way I was treated, and this is me personally, the way I've been treated by men a few years ago compared to now, it's all completely different. Mm -hmm. And, that, and they're not, they are a bit nicer. Like there was a situation I was in the other day. And um, so, really, luckily, actually, the geezer was really nice to me. But it's, it's not, he wasn't nice to me. It was the things he was saying. He said to me, go, listen, you should never live in fear, you know. Mm -hmm. right. for, like, for, for a straight geezer, and for his, his uh, Turkish background, same background as me, and that, right? Turks mm -hmm. can be a bit, like, hardcore when it comes to, like, LGBT things and that, yeah. But mm -hmm. he turned around and said to me, do you know what, John and Benyam? He goes, don't you ever stress. And that and you should never live in fear. Mm. You should never live in fear. And that's one of the first experiences I've had personally with a man where he's like actually all right. Do you know what I mean? Where he really ain't like a dog. Mm. Do you know but I mean? he's not, but you were like his first though. Yeah, but I didn't tell him I was trans. No, that's no, but that's thing. what I mean. He didn't, he wasn't, because I feel like the ones that have like, gone through a few girls, they start to create their own, oh, yeah, they create yeah. their own narrative of how they treat yeah, trans. Exactly. Like, but, when but when it's like their first, they still put you in the category of woman. Yeah. And that's why he could still respect course, you and course, value you in that course. way. But again, he mm, wouldn't have had that conversation with me if I weren't on blockers, I do. Like, that's just... No, 100. Like, but I'm saying it's, I'm all, saying, yeah. all, it's all levels where you're at in your transition, where your head is at medically. And we live in a very visual world. And I tell every motherfucker this. We live in a visual world. People take what they see. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. take what they see literally. Right? Yeah. So when you fit something in their mind, and that they, they, there's more likely to have conversation. I don't know, that's my experience. But I feel, I feel anyway. with the ones who have gone through a lot of girls, he will, he will know or try to think he knows the right things to say to you. Yeah. To try to trick you into mm. feeling this type of way, that type of way. And this, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if absolutely. we're going to talk about, Listen, if we're going to talk about have their they strategies, treat, though. Mm -hmm. All geezers have their strategies. Let's not get it twisted. It's not just the trans. Yeah, and they're starting to learn what to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah they're starting yeah. to learn, definitely. <laughs> but I've, it all depends on the situation, truth be told. I've met some lovely geezers and I've met some right fucking mm. arseholes. Do you know mm. what I mean? So it's really, it all depends on the situation. I will say, no. I think that it is changing in the sense that the next generation of guys who are coming up, so the whole trans thing became mm. kind of normal, say mm. like the trans tipping point happened in what, like 2014, mm. 15? Mm. So we were like, well, I was like 20-ish then. Mm. The boys who, <laughs> this gives us something way about me, but I've been <laughs> to like younger guys lately, like mm. I'm into that. And the guys I've been linking have been like, so they would have been like, 15 when that happened or whatever mm. like they're like a good bit younger so they're like I'm dating guys for like 20, 21 or whatever mm. so they would have like mm. come into their manhood and their, mm. their adulthood and like learning the world at that time when mm. it became normal so like it's always been normal for them mm. like since they've like mm. I remember being 15 in school and just hearing the word tranny and like mm. it, it's just a, a total negative and like mm. yeah. they've been like fed this culture of that it's okay to be trans and like da -da 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 mm. and like yeah. all these like positive media representations of yeah. trans women who are beautiful and intelligent mm. like like Janet like Laverne mm. like mm. Carmen like yeah. so they've got a different understanding of it so when mm. I've been linking yeah. these younger guys for like 21-ish 20 mm. they treat me like they're like no you're just a girl and it's, yeah. it's, they don't yeah. have as much shame wrapped up that's like, true well, I find it to be much so. but I feel like they want they're like 
just they don't have the shame that the guys are age and yeah. older. Yeah, they didn't grow up in the Jerry Springer era. Yeah, that's so true. That's why Jerry Springer killed it. The Jerry Springer era. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. the nineties, the nineties. Yeah, that's where the whole tricking thing came from as well. Yeah, the nineties was a really big time. It was Ace Ventura. Yeah, Ace Ventura and the Crying Game. Right. Yeah, just, obviously yeah. the trade, the trade, the young boys are today that like, they're not going to grow up in a generation where mm. you know the Jerry Springer generation, mm. the nineties was hardcore transphobic mm. on the mm. girls and that, you know, so they're not going to be fed a narrative about what our people and what us girls and that are like. Do you know what I mean? So. What do they say when on Jerry Springs? They don't say that's a transsexual, they say that's a that's man. A man. So that's they're a man. telling the, yeah. the, the public, yeah. these are this men. Is, this, this is how you get in the This yeah, is how you get in the And I always wonder, transsexual. are they choosing those, are those girls who are up there, are they saying that in order to pay for sex? Yeah, they Still, are. Do you know what I mean? I heard the yeah. tea. So the first, like, Whenever they first started doing yeah, that, yeah. they were real tea. Yeah. Then after that, they noticed how popular listen. that thing was, yeah. and then they just started getting yeah, gay boys and drag queens. It's oh, sad, yeah, it's sad, insane. because the girls are doing it, yeah, they're mugging themselves off on TV yeah. knowingly. Yeah. But at the time, right? that, that, that yeah, wasn't what you had choice. to do. Yeah, yeah, that's what you had to do in order it was to get the money. Or that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, you know, more power to the girls than that, you know what I mean? You know, they really, you know, sold themselves down the swanny, and that to get, you know, and more power to them mm. and that, that's resilience and that's strength man. and then you know, put yourself on the line the thing man. on the media and then men so like how there is more just better representation but there are obviously some older guys that could go past that media and, and be like i'm better than that the media and I trans dated. men that sleep yeah, yeah. with the trans girls though don't get no no yeah. yeah and like there was a guy i was dating and he she he even brought up the ace and true moment with me yeah. and was like yeah i remember that watching that and not really understanding why that was wrong but i knew it was wrong mm. yeah. and so when he did start dating trans girls he was like oh that's really fucked up that tried to make me feel a type of way yeah. but because of how much of his own he knew his manhood he didn't follow the crowd he knows mm. that this is what i'm about this is how i'm going to roll in the world mm. the, my manhood is i'm not going to be a sheep i don't think the world really prepares men in that They're way no, no 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 i feel like it's his such a mother false did. narrative his mother did his that, mother because really yeah did. there's so much fear you know like i remember when i was watching pose and um the character stan where's the bag hold on i'll just get the thing i wrote down his speech hold on sort it yeah because i remember when stan and angel are in the diner and oh, i man. broke the fuck down yeah, i could man. not go on right because <clears throat> it just like, I mean, I guess it's like a sort of monologue, really. Like, the way. There, there it is. So, yeah, when Sam was speaking to Angel, he says, <clears throat> I'm no one. I want what I'm supposed to want. I wear what I'm supposed to wear, and I work where I'm supposed to work. I stand for nothing. I've never fought in a war, and I probably won't ever have to because the next one's gonna kill us all. I can buy things I can't afford, which mean they're never really mine. I don't live, I don't believe, I accumulate, I'm a brand, a middle class white guy. But you are who you are, even if the price you pay for it is being disinvited from the rest of the world. I'm the one playing dress up. Is it wrong to be with one of the few people in the world who isn't, to have one person in my life who I know is real? And then she goes, so you think of me as a real woman? And he said, you'd be crazy to choose this life if you didn't have to. And I That's broke powerful, down. I was like, well, that is every relationship I've ever been in. Because like, sometimes I live with these men and they're just so constricted and they can't tell anyone. They can, like, this, and it's not just Lincoln Trace. It affects and um, impacts so many other areas of their lives. Do you know what I mean? Like they, they're not willing to quit that job. They're not willing to tell their brother to fuck off. They're not willing mm. to do yeah. so much and to live their lives yeah. truthfully. Whereas... There's nothing that could come between me and my transition. No, you know what I mean? There's absolutely nothing. No. You could, the amount of pain, no matter, literally, whenever certain things in my transition have been thrown down, it's like, mm. okay, well, that's 20 grand. Yeah. Gonna have to find it from somewhere. Yeah. And I find myself praying, and I find that's deep in my yeah. spiritual experience because I know I'm gonna get there. Can't see it, don't need to see it, but I know I'm gonna get there. No. And I feel like when we're with these men, like, it's so, sometimes it's really hard yeah, for them because they feel our strength. They feel yeah. that we, 
couldn't give a fuck. I do yeah. not care about being liked. I don't care no. what you're saying. Call me a man 567 yeah, times in one day and watch me turn it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? So it's like, I think sometimes it's really difficult for them because they are raised to be mm. upstanding, you know, integrous, straight men of straight and whatever. And mm. it's like, that's not really the way you are raised and they're yeah. so underinformed. Like I'm finding myself yeah. having to educate them about sexual health yeah. and also do you know what I mean? Like, no, well, they don't know. Six, the amount, I'm on YouTube finding links. You know what, what is prep? You know, you know oh, what I mean? Feeding God. them these God. things like it's just I feel so sad for them sometimes because yeah. their lives are so much more constricted yeah. than ours. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like that Paris I was linking and that he said to me, I remember he said to me one time, he was like, Elena, baby, he goes, if I won the lottery, mm. and he goes, it'd be so different. He goes, I'll just mm. pay my dad's bills off, pay mm. my mum's bills off, and he goes, and I'll just say, fuck you, and then he goes, I'd run away with you, he said mm. that to me. Because he can't, his dad's that Turkish. That is everything. That is I know, so literally. He's, but he's Turkish though, and he's mm. obsessed with his dad. He's like, no, my mm. brother's, uh, you know, mm. his world and that. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, that's mm. nice for you, but that's also quite sad that you know mm. you live your life through other people. At the mm. end of the day. I couldn't give a fuck. I've been mm. doing this journey since I was 14. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that is powerful stuff. Mm. Um, that from Pose, you know. Yeah. It's very powerful stuff, and it's true. The girls have resilience. I bang him like, too. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But yeah, we spent so much time talking about men and trade or whatever. Let's get back to the girls. Yeah. What? Who are who is, excuse me, the um, trans woman that has impacted you in your life and your transition the most in recent times? Right, person, personally, there's so many of the girls, and that, but one that stuck with me, and that because of her story, mm. and that is Bülent Ersoy, and mm. that because she's a famous Turkish transgender singer. Say her name again. So. Bülent Ersoy. Sorry. And she's the Turk diva, no, she's the mm. Turkish diva. Mm. And um, she started her career pre-transition and that, very famous, she was a, uh, basically uh, come up and coming and that mm. and she said I'm going to be bigger than Zeki Muren who was mm. the Liberace of the time mm, mm. and um, then Bülent just went full force and started transitioning bear in mind she kept her male name Bülent mm, that's mm. a man's name I've seen she kept it, okay. she kept it. it's a gift from her parents yeah that's me as well like, I'm yeah, name. standard but I've met a few girls mm. who were like that it's a gift from their parents yeah. And she was barred from Turkey because, you know, with the polit politicians and the politics mm. at the time was saying that you can't be a man dressed as a woman. Mm. So she literally came to London, got SRS, mm. and went back to Turkey. Same. And said, yeah, I'm a woman now. You can't mm. basically ban me. And mm. then she's been massive ever since. So and they love right. her. Mm -hmm. Icon. Stunted, stunted. Wow. Rafa, what about you, Charlie? I would say... One of my biggest trans inspirations has been Nadia Almada from Big Brother. So she's a UK celebrity, so you American girls or from anywhere else probably won't know her, but Google Big Brother, which is a reality TV show that we have, most countries have it now, but um, uh, she was on it in around 2005, six around that time, mm -hmm. I think, 2004 maybe, and she um, was a trans woman. And she went on the show and she won it. So mm. reality, re, re, uh, sorry, Big Brother was like a reality TV show and she won it. And it was just amazing. It wasn't even the fact that she won it, but it was how she carried herself during mm -hmm. it. And it was really important for me to see that. So I was mm. about maybe like 13, 12 at the time. Mm. And I was being really, really mercilessly bullied at school for being LGBT, like just so visibly mm. feminine. Mm. And I was at an all boys school, like a tough all boys school. And I was being really badly bullied. Mm. And seeing this person like me on mm -hmm. TV, bearing in mind this was in like 2004 mm -hmm. when there was no positive media rep mm -hmm. trans, trans representation. Mm -hmm. So like you didn't see positive representations mm -hmm. of trans people being strong, amazing women. Mm -hmm. It meant so much to like my sense of self mm -hmm. and how I saw myself and I stopped seeing myself as a victim and bitch, I started fighting back. Cause I remember in the house, if you watch her best bits, mm -hmm. Google Nadia Big mm -hmm. Brother best bits. What are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? There was a shit bag in the house, Jason. I'm at you, Jason. Oh, we'll yeah, full full that's 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 Scottish, Scottish that's 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 And this man's all up in her face, and mm -hmm. she's like squaring up to like, What are you gonna do? And yeah. then she like, she won it, and he came second, so it was really like, yeah. It was just like, an amazing oh, moment. Probably. Like, Standard. it was just amazing that the public got behind as well, but it was just, mm. a, it was more than a, a, a side of the time, then, wasn't it? It was yeah. crazy, and she was like the only representation we have had of trans people in the UK mm. for yeah. such for a long time, for about 10 years. So, from like, do you know what I mean? Like, we didn't have anyone else for a good while so Sometimes, she was my one yeah. and i love you nadia we're friends now so i'm gonna <laughs> let, i'm gonna find her tag her um 
My one is Janet Mock. Uh, I think just her story is so powerful. I think especially like relating to her being very androgynous as well um, as a child. I think that was something that I went through. So seeing that reflection of myself in her story was like, oh shit, wow. And this was before I transitioned. So she was really my like final, like, come on bitch, you gotta do this. Um, and yeah, her story, in some ways she's an ideal, but in many other ways she has gone through a lot. She's gone through a lot to become the woman she is. She has worked her ass off. And I think that's also something that was really revealing about her second book was how, you know, she transitioned and did all her stuff, but then continued to just keep working hard, be mm. the best in what her field is. And like, that is really inspiring that like, I kind of do feel that I'm in a position where I'm not able to fully put all my energy to in one singular career and I kind of have to multitask multiple things but I feel like seeing her do one thing and then go to another is like okay maybe if I kind of dabble in this bit and dabble in that bit but then like once I get past this junction mm -hmm. I'll be able to be full throttle ahead into the rest of it mm -hmm. and I think in that way she's like just Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. My one is Cat Black um, because I just got to 2014. I was in a desperate place and um, I just loved, I've always loved um, her as a YouTube personality uh, because um, like, I don't think she necessarily even. Um, would, would expect this to happen but she's just she accompanied me do you know what i mean through my transition i was able mm. to have her on in the yeah. background when yeah, i was cleaning yeah, yeah. and beating my face do you know what i mean i learned so much and in terms of like um the life she, she's messy do you know what i mean i love that you know that she's had relationships and she could be a hoe and she owns it i love that she's you know come out as poly um amorous and like all of the details of um the BDSM scene in LA and stuff like that. I just feel so fortunate, and that that is um, that is in direct contradiction to what appeared to be like a really conformist relationship with um, BD. Like he was just, and also that he was. I don't know. I found, I got so much from the fact that um, he didn't appear to objectify her in any sort of violent way. Because mm -hmm. again, I expect that. You know that um, <clears throat> that um, they that that men are gonna like want to own you and stuff, and that 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 when they were together, it was very um, cute and warm, and also the way that their relationship ended was just really um, natural to me. It didn't, yeah, it didn't feel like it was really predicated on transness and he couldn't deal with it it was yeah just two people like muddling through that life that just yeah and i really needed to see that there's this really cool kind of californian insouciance to the way she lives her life and i really love that um, <laughs> it's just <French>. and, uh, <laughs> i'm smart <laughs> but um but yeah, I have really taken so much from her. And also because she's so entrepreneurial and is, yeah, owns her own money and life and stuff. And yeah, it's multifaceted. Um, yeah, it's just been, yeah, it's just been really great to have her in my home. Because that's what happens if someone's on YouTube, right? You just put it on mm. and they're just in your home. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we'd be friends. Like, I hope so, I guess. But like, she doesn't, yeah, she doesn't have like loads, does she? Anyways. But like anyway, that's the person who yeah I think has probably impacted my transition the most in recent times, mm. as it goes. Particularly teasing Kiki's, you introduced me to that one. Yeah, I love, love that. that. That yeah. was queer and diversity down. down. Like everything. oh my, everything. literally. And yeah, I love like yeah non-binary people not taking no shit. Do you know what I mean? Like dragging them at work yeah. and stuff. Like I really miss that people. Like, I would like Dakota. Yeah, Dakota. Oh makeup artists, I really miss them. Yeah. Like, yeah, as it goes. So yeah, that is yeah, that's who's really impacted me and helped me to think the deepest and challenge myself because I feel that as binary trans women, we you know just you know 
Was it? What's what you say? We say it's just a good old, you know, um, good old transsexual me. Was old, it? Uh, old school. Old transsexual. school. Yeah, old school transsexual me. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's it's it how goes. Exactly. Yeah. Give me my hands. Give me my stuff. Give, give me my hands. Give me my stuff. Let me get the fuck out of here, man. Literally, as it goes. So yeah. 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 Yeah.